Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plan Obsessed and back from vacation. Let's see what the 55 gallon bin has been doing while I was gone. It has been three weeks since I've looked at them and I did feed them quite a bit so we'll see if that was enough to sustain them for the whole time I was gone or if they have gone wanting. Come on guys, get out. Well, you can see a pretty good depression here where they have uh, made quick use or certainly have done a lot of eating. I don't know what I'm growing here. Um, not on purpose, not part of the experiment. So let's uh, let's take a looky loo. Looks like I've got a good size pill bug hanging out. So let's let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna move you a little closer. All right. Well, the part that we stacked up tall and I'll put a link up here so that you can see the progress but as things get finished I keep shoving them a little bit further this way and then anything that's not getting decomposed I'm moving to the other end no use having it hang out here and then I have to just sift it later right so just as we're looking at the big picture the really dark area is the part that's been in there the longest this the next longest this the next longest and this last little part next to the attachment is what we fed last time and I'm not sure if you can how well you can see this but I have mushrooms I'm not really sure what the story is with that I, I don't I didn't put any mushrooms in the bin um, I don't I don't remember I'm going to have to rewatch my own videos to see what exactly is causing me to have mushrooms in here. Got maybe, you know, some mushroom spores on some of the mulch that came in. I don't know. It's, I think it's the first time I've had mushrooms. I'm not sure what kind of mushrooms those are. Let's see. From what I know about mushrooms is that you look at the top of them and then you look at the underneath side of them. And then, in theory, you should be able to tell what kind of mushrooms they are. Useless information, but my brain is totally full of it. All right. Well, I'm going to put you back on the stand, and then I'm going to start digging in. All right. So I didn't feed over here. I just um, started moving all the big things to the end. But uh, this stuff was not, it's pretty old, a couple months old. There's an eggshell that must have got from somebody that, and there's a tortilla wrapper. I think I now know that this stuff is the lemongrass. So just looking to see what they are still into. God help me, I want to smell it again. Yeah, that's the cinnamon bark. So we'll see how that progresses. Um, wasn't a big risk there. I saw that it had a curl to it. Not too many things except for cinnamon do that. At least not things that I put in. All right, so just looking to see what the, the status of the ones in the medium age portion are doing. doesn't look like a huge concentration in any one spot which is what we would expect from something that has not actually been fed recently hey look who's still hanging out in the avocado okay so that area there's the part of me that doesn't really want to disturb this and then there's the part of me that can't leave it alone over here so 
What are the chances I'm going to leave it alone? Pretty small. So let's let's take a little look at this. I'm not going to go too crazy. Um, but it looks like we still have a fair number of worms in the most complete portion. So my opinion beyond they're not done with it. But because there was the biggest depression here, that means they've consumed the most food in this area. And also there's a big depression here, which you can't see because I moved the camera. Big depression here. Um, that's where it seems like most of the food has gone into their bellies or whatever. So I'm um, going to mound things up here and start looking in the area where I did feed and see see what kind of action we can find. I mean there is the possibility we won't really find much because it has been like three weeks. It's not quite ready to break open yet. This was all the, the new bedding that I made. If I dig down deep, normally I can find some kind of a concentration going on. Moisture feels pretty good. I don't know if you can hear that. So the bubble wrap is continuing to do a lovely job of keeping everybody at the correct moisture level in the winter time, which here in the basement is easier said than done with the furnace being, you know, five feet away. Everybody's favorite more or less compostable thing, bags. So it looks like we've still got just overall same concentration throughout here. But I'm going to pile that up. Except for that silly tea bag. Not really a worm ball in the group yet. But we're still only in like the second zone here, so there's still hope for a worm ball yet. Okay, now we're going to move over to the most recently fed part. So fingers crossed that maybe we get a bit of a worm ball somewhere. Well, there's some coffee. Not a worm ball, but certainly more interest. Again, more coffee. So, it's not really a worm ball, but coffee for the win for sure. Lots of little blue worms wiggling around super fast. Mm -hmm push this around and see what it's doing. Ugh, flip that over. And that looks like mostly bedding. So yeah, there's a they've certainly moved in to this area more so than the others. So, get off there, buddy. They are moving along but they're not ready to give up that area over there that I would consider to be almost done. Well, you know, this is what the worms do. This is their, their business. So if they're not done with it, then they would know better than me. So it looks like a banana piece. They're all snuggled up inside the banana. I'm just gonna make sure they Get enough air to everything, make sure there's no anaerobic pockets because there is a lot of paper in this bedding. And that is one of the, the possibilities when you use a high concentration of paper is that 
um, there could be anaerobic pockets and not just for the fact that it won't break down very good but also um, it uh, you know isn't available for the little wormies to eat which is the whole point right right so going through all of this in the recently fed stuff and oh well I don't know I don't know exactly what that was they're sure, certainly digging it. So there we go. Fluffing them up, getting them some air. And if you um, are new to the channel, um, go ahead and rewatch the, or start watching the series on this. Every time that I do a big feeding, I shove everything down, and it seems like this divider spot right here. Um, <laughs> I keep moving everything back and it keeps, you know, ending up right about here. So, um, I think that this is going to hold probably almost a year's worth by the time that it's all finished. As that part completely finishes up and this part gets smaller and moved over and et cetera and so forth, I think, you know, we're probably going to be into probably the, you know, next fall before we get to the other end. So let me get our compostable bags and I'll just show you. These are the newest ones that have been put in here and they're still very stretchy and plasticky. Um, you can also tell they're making a little progress. You can tell it makes a nice pocket of moisture in there. It doesn't smell weird or anything. But, you know, the worms do hang in there for whatever reason. But I uh, use these mostly for work. And I freeze everything that I get and then microwave it for a couple of minutes before I bring it into the worms. I'm hoping that microwaving it will simulate a hot compost and help those break down. Like I said before, I'm not going to buy them again for, you know, for the reason that I don't live in a place that has industrial composting. So it would not do me any good to, um, to buy those again because they're not working in a timely manner with the worms. And my goal is to reduce my, reduce my outside compost um, bins and have the worms do most of the work. All right, well, it looks like they're still plugging along in there. I am going to go grab some food really quick. I'm not going to give them any more bedding. I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of food in there, and I will be right back. All right, well, here's a ye old bag of stuff from work. What everybody's familiar with seeing. Um, I put this in the bottom of the work green bin just to absorb the coffee liquid otherwise it leaks out and um, trying to make sure that everybody perceives this green bin as a good thing and I don't want it to collect bugs or anything like that so I do what I can to make sure that uh, the coffee or anything doesn't get weird smelling or anything so I'm just gonna kinda separate that out a little bit Give them a little bit right there. Probably gonna use the rest of this for another bin. I just wanted to give them a little supplement because it seems like they're a little heavy on the bedding and not so much with the nitrogen food. So I'm gonna grab up whatever food bits and jam them underneath of there. But I'm gonna use the rest of that food for the other bins. All right, not a really super exciting thing, but, you know, video. But, you know, as we all get into the worm farming, we realize that there's there's quite a bit of maintenance that's that's not exactly glorious, you know, uh, drama as far as worms go. They are just silent little workers helping us all out. All right, guys, well, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. 
And if you are not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And that way uh, we can all be part of the same worm family here. And if you want to know exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing it, hit the little bell icon. Alright guys, well thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.